All right, so in the last couple of videos, we learned where the centroids are for some simple shapes like semicircles and triangles and squares. And then we also learned how to, to locate the centroid of a shape that we're unsure of using some integration. Now this is a popular type of question that you'll run into in statics where you're asked to find the centroid of a compound shape. So if you imagine this whole shape here, uh, they're looking for where is the centroid of this entire shape. Well, the way that we do it is we just locate, we break it into simple shapes that we already know where the centroids are, and then we uh, we add them up together sort of using that discrete method that I was talking about uh, uh, in one of the and I think in the last video, where we, uh, to find the centroid of multiple things, we have just the sum of xi times the area, so that would be the the, the centroid along the, the x component of the centroid and the area of that individual shape uh, and that was over just the total area of the thing that we're looking at. So we're going to be using this formula uh, and basically we just know that the centroid for the triangle is going to be somewhere like that. The centroid of the square will be somewhere in the middle, will be in the middle and the centroid of this semicircle will be uh, according to this formula. So what we want to do here is we want to get each component here. So the easiest way to do it is to construct a, a bit of a table here. So let's go like this. Um, and we'll do it sort of by parts. So we'll have, first of all, we'll have the triangle and then we'll do the stuff for the square and then lastly, the semicircle. So the first thing that we need to calculate for each individual shape is the component, the X component of, uh, of its own little centroid here. So to calculate the centroid of a triangle, uh, basically we need to be two-thirds away from the, the short side and that's going to give us the x component. So that's simply just two-thirds times the base. And in this case the base is two, so we have two times two over three. And that's also just going to give us four-thirds. So that is the x component of the uh, of the centroid here, or the centroid along the, the x-axis. Uh, for the square, we are going to, it'll be halfway along the length, and so the, or halfway along the base, and so the base is, well, it's 8 minus 2, so it's uh, 6 units long, but we also have to add in this 2 here, because uh, it's from from the 0 here that we're, we're looking at, uh, from 0, so it's going to be 2 plus 1 half base, 1 half of the base, and, and this is the base of the square uh, in this case. And so we have two plus, well, uh, one half. Uh, the base was eight minus two, which is six. So we have six divided by two is three plus two. That gives us five. So we can even draw these on. Maybe let's change the color here. So this X bar here is located at four thirds. This one here, its location on the x-axis is 5. And then if we go and figure out the last one here for the, the x location of this, well, we have to first, we know that the, the x, we can find the, the centroid using this little formula here based on where the start of uh, the semicircle is. But the semicircle is also 8 units away from the origin. So we just got to start off by adding in 8 plus, and the formula is up here, it is 4 times r over 3 pi. And the radius here, you can pick this off the diagram, sometimes it won't be given to you, but clearly if this is 3 units tall, and this is half of a circle, then the radius here is going to be half of that height, so the radius is going to be 1.5. So we get 8 plus 4 times the radius, which is 1.5 over 3 times pi. And uh, and if you just solve that, this term here is going to be about 0 0.64 and add it to 8, so we get 8.64. All right, so we've got all of the xi, the, the, the um, what do you call those things, the centroids, the location of the centroid on the x-axis, there we go. 8.64 for that guy. All right, so the next thing we need to do is we just need to figure out what the areas are for each of these compound shapes. So let's put in the next part of our table here. Uh, and we'll do each individual area. 
And this is pretty easy. The area of a triangle is just one half base height, one half times base times height. And in this case, our base is two and our height is three. So that's going to give us an area of just three units there. The area of a square, simply base times height. Uh, we figured out our base here was six units and our height here is three units. So that just gives us 18. Uh, and then for the area of a semicircle, that's just, well, the area of a circle is pi r squared. So this is just half of that. So one half pi r squared. And uh, we, we know what all these numbers are. So that's one half pi and our radius was 1.5 squared. All right, and if we just calculate that, we get uh, that's 3.53. Okay, cool. Moving on. Uh, what we want to do now is just to simplify our life here for this equation, we can do this. We can multiply these uh, these two bits here in in the table itself. So we'll just put in a a column here. So xi times ai times ai, and uh, so we have xi four thirds times ai three. So for the triangle, four thirds times three, that's just going to give us four units. Uh, and you'll see, we could do this all in the equation, but it's just a little bit easier to organize it here in the table. Uh, so for the square, it's uh, xi is five times 18, which is that, uh, so five times 18, that's going to give us a value of 90. And then lastly down here, so we just have 8.64 uh, times 3.53. And that gives us a value, it's about 30.5. Uh, so what we want to do is we just want to plug these all into the equation now. So maybe let's change the color here. So we get x bar is equal to the sum of these products, well, we've already done the products, so we'll just take the sum of them. So that's simply four plus 90 plus 30.5 and divided by the sum of all of the areas. So the sum of the areas here is, uh, we add up each of those, three plus 18 plus 3.53 and that's going to give us, that's about 124.5 over 24.53. And if you just simplify that, we get our final X bar for the whole shape is about 5.08 units. So 5.08, the, the actual X bar of the composite object would be here at 5.08. 08. Now we could also find the the y bar of this, but uh, we'll just we'll just skip that for now uh, because often what we do in statics is you'll find some type of loading on a beam like this, and it'll be applying a force downwards on the beam, and that's mostly what we're concerned with. So uh, that's the process of how you find the centroid of a composite object. You just break it into the simple shapes, uh, find the the x bar of each of those shapes, find the area of each of those shapes and then just apply this formula. And it will give you the X bar of the composite shape, which is just the location of the centroid of that composite shape along the X axis.